Welcome to the third episode of our epic series on the Trojan War. In today's story, we'll explore the fascinating life of Menelaus, the legendary king of Mycenaean Sparta and the husband of Helen of Troy. Although he's often overshadowed by his wife, Menelaus played a crucial role in the Trojan War, which all began with the daring abduction of Helen by Prince Paris of Troy. Join us as we unravel the epic journey of Menelaus and his unwavering determination to return home to Sparta. Menelaus was the son of Atreus and the younger brother of Agamemnon, the overall commander of the Greek army. In ancient Greece, before the 5th century, the two brothers, Atreus and Thyestes, were in a lengthy battle over the throne of Mycenae. Ultimately, Atreus emerged victorious, but his reign was short-lived. Thyestes sought revenge by consulting an oracle which predicted that his own son, born from a disturbing union with his daughter Pelopia, would one day kill Atreus. The prophecy came true, and Thyestes took control of Mycenae. In the midst of this chaos, Menelaus and his older brother Agamemnon fled Mycenae. Their journey led them through various kingdoms, where they sought support to reclaim their birthright from Thyestes. Their travels brought them to Sparta, which was ruled by King Tyndareus, the most powerful Greek king at that time. With the help of Tyndareus, the brothers defeated Thyestes and Agamemnon. Being the elder brother became the new ruler of Mycenae. Around the same time in Sparta, Helen of Troy, originally known as Helen of Sparta, was renowned as the world's most beautiful woman. She was the daughter of Zeus and stepdaughter of King Tyndareus through his marriage to her mother, Leda. With many suitors vying for her hand in marriage, King Tyndareus faced a dilemma. He knew that no matter whom Helen chose, it would sow discord among the spurned suitors, causing conflicts. Odysseus came to the rescue, offering a clever solution, and struck a deal with King Tyndareus. He proposed that before Tyndareus made a decision, all the suitors should swear an oath to protect Helen's chosen husband from any future potential conflicts. This became known as the Oath of Tyndareus. After the suitors took the oath, Tyndareus gave Helen's hand in marriage to Menelaus, and Agamemnon married Tyndareus' other daughter, Clytemnestra. Some versions of the mythology suggest this happened after Menelaus and Helen's wedding as a way to appease Agamemnon for losing the chance to marry the world's most beautiful woman. As time went on, Tyndareus abdicated, and Menelaus became the new king of Sparta. However, his life takes a dramatic turn when Helen is abducted by Paris, a Trojan prince. Legend has it that Eris, the goddess of strife, harbored resentment for being excluded from the wedding of Peleus and Thetis. Seeking revenge, she flung a golden apple inscribed with the words to the fairest one among the wedding guests, inciting dispute among the goddesses Hera, Athena, and Aphrodite. Although Zeus was asked to mediate, he declined, and instead sent the goddesses to Troy, where Paris would decide who should get the golden apple. In a bid to win his favor, each goddess offered Paris a bribe. Hera presented the allure of royal authority, Athena offered triumph on the battlefield, and Aphrodite promised him Helen as his wife. Paris, swayed by Aphrodite's promise of the most exquisite woman in the world, awarded the golden apple to her. To claim his prize, Paris traveled to Sparta where Menelaus welcomed him. Shortly after his arrival, Menelaus had to leave the city to attend the funeral of his maternal grandfather, Catrius. Taking advantage of Menelaus's absence, Paris, with the help of Aphrodite, seduced and fled with Helen. This act of abduction violated the sacred oath of Tyndareus. Upon Menelaus's return, he was furious and invoked the oath of Tyndareus, summoning the most powerful Greek rulers. A thousand Greek ships were launched against Troy, 60 of which were commanded by Menelaus himself. The Trojans' refusal to surrender Helen, later known as Helen of Troy, led to the declaration of the famous Trojan War. During the Trojan War, Menelaus found protection from the goddesses Athena and Hera, who were displeased with Paris' judgment. Although not the greatest among the Greek heroes at Troy, 
Menelaus is credited with slaying seven or eight Trojan heroes. He is remembered for participating in the retrieval of the corpse of Patroclus from the battlefield and, prior to Nestor's admonition, being the only one courageous enough to accept Hector's challenge to single combat. However, Agamemnon, aware of Menelaus' inferiority to Hector, persuaded him to decline the challenge, and ultimately it was Telamonian Ajax who faced Hector. Menelaus engaged in single combat with Paris early in the Iliad. A truce was declared in the tenth year of the war, leading to a duel between Menelaus and Paris in an attempt to resolve the conflict. Paris, overmatched by Menelaus, would have been defeated if not for the intervention of Aphrodite, who magically transported him away from the battle. A dispute arose over the battle's outcome, and the truce abruptly ended when Menelaus suffered a minor wound from a Trojan archer's arrow. Ultimately, the Trojans were defeated through Odysseus's cunning use of the Trojan horse. Greek warriors concealed themselves within a massive wooden horse, which was presented as a gift to the unsuspecting Trojans. Under the cover of night, they emerged from the horse, opened the city gates, and allowed the Greek army to enter and lay siege to Troy. Menelaus was among the Greeks hidden inside the horse. Following Troy's destruction, Menelaus was eventually reunited with Helen, and although various versions of the mythology exist, Menelaus initially intended to kill her for her betrayal. However, he changed his mind upon seeing her beauty. Subsequently, Menelaus took Helen back to his ships, and they sailed for Sparta. The journey home proved challenging for Menelaus as he wandered the Mediterranean for several years. In Homer's Odyssey, Menelaus recounts his travels to Telemachus, Odysseus' son. Telemachus and the audience of the Iliad learn that the gods, who were offended because the sacrifices due to them were neglected, prevented Menelaus from returning home. During his years of wandering, Menelaus accumulated a great amount of wealth and eventually reached Egypt, where the sea god Proteus revealed the reason for his delayed return to Sparta. Menelaus appeased the gods, ending his seemingly endless odyssey, and finally returned home to Sparta. Menelaus and Helen had a daughter, Hermione, who was born long before the Trojan War began. Her hand in marriage had been promised to both Neoptolemus, the son of Achilles, and Orestes, the son of Agamemnon. One version of the myth suggests Menelaus made both betrothals, while another claims Tyndareus made one. Regardless, Hermione married Neoptolemus. The marriage, however, turned out to be an unhappy one for Hermione, as Neoptolemus preferred his mistress, Andromache. Orestes eventually killed Neoptolemus and took Hermione as his wife. After his odyssey, Menelaus ruled Sparta for the rest of his life. Compared to many Greek heroes at Troy, Menelaus had a fortunate ending, reuniting with Helen after the Trojan War and amassing wealth on his Mediterranean odyssey. As the son-in-law of Zeus, he was promised a place in the Elysian fields after death. Menelaus and Helen are said to have voyaged to Elysium to spend eternity in paradise when their earthly lives came to an end. Their love story and Menelaus' determination to uphold his honor have left an indelible mark on Greek mythology, inspiring countless tales and interpretations. Thank you for joining us on this epic journey through the life of Menelaus, a figure whose legacy, though sometimes overshadowed, remains an essential thread in the tapestry of the Trojan War and Greek mythology. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comment section. Until next time.